Um, and CRW has a lot of connections to it. Um, Rusa was formed in 1998 sort of, uh, to replace another organization, and it was formed by a lot of CRW people. And actually, Rusa's charter is based a lot on CRWs. Um, so, uh, Dave Jordan, who I don't know if anyone remembers, um, yeah, he was, he was one of the, the founding members, um, a couple other people. So, um, a lot of connections to CRW, which is, which is great. Um, and also, just sort of uh, quickly, uh, this region in particular has some of the best, um, we have some of the best records uh, of American regions in France, but particularly for women, we've had some really great um, records. I think four of the people here, four of the women here, hold records, youngest rider, oldest rider, uh, first rider to finish. Um, so it's... Uh, it's a tandem record as well. So. Mixed in. Yeah, and, and, uh, and we're probably, I would, I would sort of say we, we may set a tandem record this upcoming year too, so. But who knows, it's not a race, it, it is really <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, So, uh, a couple of terms, again, um, a popular is a brevet that's under 200K. Um, it's not a brevet, it's popular. Um, the first one we have around here is right in Concord. Uh, starts at the Sherbrooke School, uh, and that's the March 23rd, so it's really right around the corner. Uh, the series starts very early in the year, unfortunately. Um, Brevet is pretty much any ride uh, from 200K up until 1200 kilometers, or to 1199. Um, and then uh, there's flushes, which are team events. They are really fun. Um, we won't run here, it'll be in mid-May. Um, website can tell you more about that. And SR series is completing the two, three, four, and six, um, which you have to do in the year of PDP. So if you want to go to Paris this year, and unfortunately they're probably sold out for the first time at about 6,500 riders. Um, so you may have to wait until 2023, uh, but when you, do some, when you do sign up, you have to do a full series, and in this case it needs to be, um, or PDP years, it needs to be for July 1st. Oh, yeah, and, and uh, something like reminded me, there's lots of other 1200 caves now, too. Around here, locally, the one that probably a lot of you have heard of is Boston, Montreal, Boston. Um, sadly, that ride is, is defunct at this point, um, but there are, um, there are lots of others. You know, every year there's a new one. There's about um, at least a half dozen domestically, and then uh, literally there's probably about 100 more wide. So it's a very international sport. Um, so a couple of things for the anatomy of a brevet, um, and this is all talking about sort of before EDP. Um, our rides start very early, um, sometimes very, very early. Over in Westfield, they'll start as, as early as midnight or 2 a.m. Uh, around here, our longer rides will start at 4 a.m. Um, so you know, we often say the getting to the start is the hardest part. Um, <laughs> you can sort of like mentally wake up Maybe raining, you know, get yourself out of bed. You probably only got a couple hours of sleep. If you can make it to the star, you've done half the ride. Um, <laughs> uh, you have a control, and a control is a is a stop. It's a place where you have to get um, a stamp on your brevet card sign. It's the same type of cards that that Aaron showed. Um, you know, either you can get a receipt someplace. There's different rules depending on the ride. We we make it pretty clear. Um, you have to follow the course as uh, given to you. We'll give you a cue sheet. Yes, we still have them. We also have GPS routes and so forth. Um, and you, you can leave the route if you want to, if you want to go get a sandwich someplace. But you do have to ride the entire route. Um, you're on your own. There is not support. Um, you have to give us a call if you happen to leave the route. But um, you know. It's, it's not like a big century where you're going to see hundreds of people riding by and there's going to be a sag wagon. Um, you're really on your own. You're expected to be um, a competent cyclist. You're expected to be able to fix minor um, things that could break. And you know, there's really no shame in if you can't make it or you know you have a mechanical problem or you're just not feeling good. You pull off the side of the road. You call a friend and you, you try again some other time. Um, 
there are time limits. The time limits are, you know, again, it really isn't a race. Um, you know, for the really long ones, I know people like to try to get in as quick as they can. Uh, but the time limits are on both sides. So you can actually can't go faster than a certain speed. Um, in New England, uh, I'm really unaware of anyone who butts up against the opening times. Um, you know, our routes are, are very difficult. Um, you know, and, and for the most part, it's pretty rare that people, especially for the controls, can make it in there in time. Um, but it's designed to keep moving. It's not, you don't have to be a speed, a speed demon. Generally speaking, you have to be able to sustain about a 10 mile an hour pace, you know, including stops and getting your car at the time. So, you know, it's doable. Um, you know, normal cyclists can do this. You don't have to be a, you know, a super person. You don't have to be able to go out and, and you know, be riding two or three hundred miles every weekend. Um, you know, this, this is really a, a very, you just have to like riding your bike. For maids and centuries, the distance may start the same, um, but no matter what, our brevets are hard. You know, our 200K, um, April 6th is the one out of uh, Concord, Mass. Um, it goes from here to the, um, just the, the visitor center of Wachusett. You don't go up the mountain, but you do go to the, the little visitor center. Uh, we go up the hard way to get there. Um, then we go to um, Oakham, uh, and then down to uh, Purgatory, um, State Park, and then back over. It is more climbing than climbing to the clouds um, by a fair amount. Um, you know, you have to be more independent. It's earlier in the year. Um, it's a difficult ride, but it's doable. You can do it. Um, you know, <laughs> we have. Tell how many hours it is. Yeah, and, and, and for that, the time limit is 13 and a half hours. Um, you know, I, I think everyone has made it through, you know, not everyone who starts finishes. But it's really rare that someone actually, for that one, kind of missed the time limit by 15 or 20 minutes. You know, generally people kind of realize they're not going to make it, they, they ride home much earlier, or they do okay. You know, I did it on a fixed gear on a route that was just as, as difficult. Um, and that was not a special site, because I even had a gear bike at that point, the one that I figured out. I really can't describe how fun they are and how different they are. That's, that's obviously the reason why I like it. Um, you know, camaraderie, as you can probably tell from the previous discussions, is true. You know, or even the local ones. You know, people really do help each other out. People talk to another. You become friends with someone because you got to ride with them for, for 20 hours on a 400 day. Um, you know, it's a different type of cycling, and it's really enjoyable. I think. Um, I had a, a friend, uh, Chris Conception, um, who doesn't ride these anymore, but he had a great quote that uh, the first 100 miles is physical and after that it's mental. And I think that, that's really true. If you can ride 100 miles, you can basically ride any these distances. The hard part is just getting through the mental blockage of you know, how do I keep going if I'm tired, if I'm hungry, what do I eat? Um, you know, that's sort of the challenge you have to overcome. It's not physical. As I keep saying, anyone can ride. Um, you know, there's a gorgeous seven over there. They're great bikes. Um, you know, I, Sort of, please buy one if you have the means, but don't feel like you have to. Um, you know, the bike you have right now that you like riding is probably fine. Um, you know, I did it on the heavy bike. It, it doesn't make that big of a difference. Um, you know, what you're going to find is the longer you go, you become in tune with your bike in ways you never thought you could. Um, really, so you start finding things, and, and, every, and everyone is different, and everything is very personal. So, you know, everyone has a different salad they want, a different handlebar setup. Someone can say, oh, you know, you have to be riding 38 millimeter tires, because that's the only thing that's comfortable. And I'm here to tell you that that's not true. There's plenty of people that may say, you know what, I like the feel of a 23 millimeter tire. That's the best I. That's the best thing for me, and that's what they ride. You know, I and mean, there's people that do these things on uh, triathlon bikes in, you know, full aero kits that I would never possibly conceive of. But they do well. You know, to each his own, and that's the great part. There really isn't anyone thinking, you know, I'm better than that person, or you know, or I can do this because I have. We just don't act that way. Uh, so I don't want to really take up any more time. A couple websites, newingrandors.org, uh, that's where you can find registration information and ride information for all the local rides that do around here. Um, 
Brusa.org, the national organization. I'm actually the board of directors of that as well. Um, and then this last slide is something I just launched, brusa.jcasting.org. Um, and that's a surf site, so if you are looking for rides, um, both locally and if you happen to be traveling, um, every Rusa ride is on there and you can find something that's supposed to. So it's kind of a cool site, I hope. Um, okay, well, thank you very much.